Hello. Today I'm going to go over how to create a full width half max template for well behaved graphs. This will allow you to copy and paste data from successive graphs into the template and will automatically calculate the full width half max for you based on linear interpolation. So if we look at this data, basically what it's going to do is I have data 1, data 2, data 3, and it's going to have for our x axis a pixel value, and the y axis is going to be an energy. The energy is already normalized, and I can come down here and see that the full width half max rising edge is going to be somewhere between 32 and 33. If I go all the way down to the bottom, the falling edge is going to be somewhere between 55 and 56. I subtract those two, I'll get somewhere uh, around 220, 225. Um, but then if I want to come over here to data set number two, I'm going to have to go through the same procedure again, find out halfway between where 249, 250 is, and do the manual subtraction. If we create an automatic template, it will allow you to copy and paste, as I mentioned, set one, set two, and set three, and it will automatically calculate the value for you. So what we're going to be using, as I mentioned, linear interpolation, um, it's going to be using the uh, point slope formula combined with the slope formula. And that's going to give us this combined formula down here where we can interpolate the x value given our desired y value. In this case, it's going to be the full width half max. But it can also do a 1 over e squared value um, at 0.135. Um, you can do a 90% value at 0.9, whatever else you want. Uh, and then we're going to be using our normal um, y1, y2, x1, and x2. So what I'm going to first do is copy the data over so we can start building our template. We're going to have uh, our pixels, our energy. Now we're going to need to create a column for our full width half max that we're going to graph. And over here, well, let's go ahead and graph this first. We're going to do a scatter plot. I always like to put this up towards the top of my page when I'm working. And we're just going to go through and format this in a little bit. So if it's normalized, we know it's going to never go greater than 1. My personal preference is to not use marker options, to do a line color, solid. I always like to have a thin line on there. Delete the series, and uh, we're good for now. If you want, you can go ahead and put your um, axis labels in there and the chart title. Uh, but for right now, I just want to show you how to put the full attack max in here. So what we're going to be doing is we need to graph the full width half max rising edge. We're going to do the full width half max falling edge. And we want the x value and the y value. So we want to fill in this little chart right here so we can plot it onto this graph also. So this is very easy to do the y value. You know it's going to be 0.5, and the second one's going to be 0.5. And this x value we said was somewhere around 32. The y value is somewhere around 255. So maybe just to get our data in here, we can put that in there. We want to add another data source. Uh, series name is not going to matter. Right now we're going to put in the x values, the y values, and we have something that kind of looks like a full with half max. Okay, so we're somewhere close to it. If I want to get the final version, we know this is going to be the falling edge minus the rising edge, and this right here is going to be our gold standard that we're going for. That's all going to be tied back to this 0.5 value that we have over here, the, the y value that we want. So the first instance is if the energy or the y value exactly equals 0.5, then we don't need to do an interpolation, and we can just take the x value as is. So if the energy equals 0.5 absolute, we're going to have the pixels. But if it doesn't, now this is where we um, need to be smart about how we write our equation. So if y1 and y2 are the same, this part, the uh, first numerator and the denominator is going to be 0. That makes this whole thing 0. So that means that x is going to be undefined. And we're going to get an error. And this makes sense because if y is going to be the same um, for y1 and y2, it's going to be a, a flat horizontal line and you can't interpolate that for an x value. The x value doesn't mathematically make sense. So what we first need to do 
is make sure that Y1 is going to be less than Q2, which is going to be the 0.5 that we have, absolute reference, and that Y2 is going to be greater than uh, Q2, absolute reference. If that's the case, this is going to give us our rising edge full with half max, and we can come over here and put in our formula. So our formula is going to be uh, Q2, absolute reference, minus Y1, double parentheses, Y2, minus Y1, divided by X2, minus X1, double parentheses, plus X1. And if we get that, that should be the true part of our if statement. Now, if we come over here, we're in the false part of our if statement. If this X, uh, sorry, Y1 and Y2 are the same, then we don't want to display anything. And if we close that out, we close that out, we copy this all the way down, we should have one value here for the rising edge. So a quick way of looking at that is filtering it, seeing that there's only one value, 32.8. So now we can come over here and actually calculate our full with half max rising edge. So we want to find the minimum value of column M, 32.8. Okay, so now we're a little bit closer to being exact. But we're not going to be able to find the maximum value, which we want to have for the falling edge. So we already calculated this one exactly. Uh, we only guessed at 255. We want to find the exact value over here. But if we want, we did the minimum for the rising edge. So we want to do the maximum for the falling edge. But come over here, we're going to get in, uh, the wrong value because the falling edge will never occur with our current if statement. The falling edge uh, left point, so Y1, will never be less than Y2 if it's a well-behaved graph and it's falling down. So we want to take this and statement, flip the signs from greater than and less than so that we can catch the falling edge also. So we're basically going to want to have an OR statement capitalize this, so if it's the rising edge or it's the falling edge, then you can get that value. So if we copy this, we go all the way down, now we can see that we have 32.8 and 255.8. So this full with half max will always recalculate if it's a well-behaved graph. So a well-behaved graph is going to be something that has one rising edge, one falling edge, and does not have a local minimum or maximum uh, to the left or to the right of where you want to have the full width half max. So if this graph comes up, up to say 0.6, goes back down, then goes back up again, and you want to get that second hump, that's not going to be a well-behaved graph. But for these ones, we know that they are, and in a lot of situations, you do have a well-behaved graph. So we come over here, we look for set one is 222 is going to be the full width half max. We come over for set two, and all you have to do is simply copy and paste it. You can see that the graph changed a little bit, still right around 222. We come over, we have 222 again, but if you notice, let's just go ahead and plot these over here. So this will be three. This is going to be two. And this is going to be one that simply by copy and pasting, we're able to first redraw our graph and have the full width half max automatically shift based on the X values. And number two, with the linear interpolation, we're able to calculate to a few decimal points what the actual um, full width half max ought to be. And if you put in new data set here, all you have to do is make sure that you'll uh, your full width half max goes all the way down to where the data set is. And since we used a minimum and maximum using the uh, column references, that this data over here will always be correct. All you need to do is make sure that this column in um, goes to the length of your data set. If you have any questions regarding this full width half max tutorial, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you.